To some degree, distortion is present on all radiographs that we produce. Radiographs essentially take a three-dimensional object and compress it onto a two-dimensional surface. In this presentation, I will discuss how to minimize unwanted forms of distortion and how distortion can be used to enhance clinical diagnosis. Distortion is a misrepresentation of an object's size or shape. As I mentioned before, distortion will be present to some degree on all radiographic images we produce. Distortion can be minimized by keeping the object radiographed as close to the image receptor as possible in the center of the radiation field and the image receptor maintain a 90 degree angle to the tube. Distortion can only be altered if there's some change in the spatial configuration of the tube, image receptor, or patient. One of these three things must be moved or be angled for changes in distortion to occur. Distortion can be subdivided into two major classes, the first being shape distortion. Rectangles projected as squares, circles as ovals, objects elongated or foreshortened, just to name a few. If you ever wonder why central ray placement is critical in most radiographic positions on a radiograph, only the central ray is projected perpendicular to the image receptor. As objects move from the center of the radiographic field, rays are projected at more of an angle. Centering makes all the difference between the projection of an open joint space on a radiograph or not. Additionally, angulation of the tube, patient, or image receptor can cause distortion of an image. This is a type of shape distortion that is often used to separate superimposed structures, provided that the distortion of the part of interest's shape is not overly distorted. Other major determinant of distortion is size distortion. All objects represented on radiographs are magnified to some degree. Size on a radiograph is limited to the image being larger than the object that produced it, which translates to magnification. Making an object smaller or minification is not possible. Finally, the source to image distance, object to image distance, and source to object distances are all used to manage or calculate magnification. Probably the most common use of distortion is to angle the x-ray tube relative to the image receptor to separate overlapping objects or open joint spaces. Notice that the projected shadows of the two spheres are superimposed when radiographed with a perpendicular central ray. Angling the tube separates the images of the two spheres. Notice that this angulation also elongates the sphere into oval shape. Furthermore, note that the smaller sphere, which is higher, is distorted more than the larger sphere. This emphasizes the importance of keeping objects as close to the image receptor as possible. This explains why a town's view of the skull is best done using an AP projection, keeping the occipital bone close to the imaging plate. This slide illustrates the effect angling the tube has on the final image. One should note that the image of the large ball, which is closer to the image receptor, is much less elongated and isn't shifted to the right as much as the small ball. Objects with a large object to image distance will distort more and their image will move more relative to the image receptor when the tube is angled. Even though the shape of objects are distorted, a radiologist will expect the distortion and compensate mentally for the change. Additionally, minimizing an object to image distance for important structures will minimize the distortion of the object. This slide illustrates a common exam where patient angle is used to separate the image of the sternum, which is covered by the image of the spine. The spine is a complex structure with high levels of contrast resolution, 
whereas the sternum is a flat and featureless structure with low contrast resolution. Placing the patient in a 30 degree right anterior oblique position will provide enough separation between the sternum and the spine to illustrate the sternum free of superimposition. Again, the anterior oblique position minimizes the object image distance and minimizes distortion of the sternum. On the summary slide, notice that how the spine, which is furthest from the image receptor, moves a greater distance from the center of the patient, while the sternum moves hardly any distance at all. The 30 degree tilt on the body will distort the width of the sternum slightly, but not enough to interfere with the diagnosis. Probably the least used angle utilized in radiography is to angle the image receptor. Usually image receptor angles are used to orient the image receptor parallel to the body part, such as positioning the image receptor parallel to the femoral neck for a cross table shoe through the hip. With that said, angling the image receptor will distort the final image and probably should be avoided. Therefore, care should be taken when doing portable images or other work where the image receptor is not supported by the x-ray table or the bucky tray. On the summary image, note that the rectangle is foreshortened in line with the angle of the image receptor tilt. The rectangle shape is distorted into that of a square. This is the reason care must be taken when doing portable work to assure the image receptor is perpendicular to the central ray. When one discusses distortion, one aspect of distortion that is often overlooked is part alignment. The central ray and the rays near it are essentially perpendicular to the image receptor. Whereas the more you move to the periphery of the image, the more the rays angle. This is especially true in images that require a large field size. One exam where we take advantage of this geometry is the AP lumbar spine. A normal lumbar spine has a slight curvature called a lordotic curve. As the x-rays propagate from the tube, they angle more as you move from the central ray Note how the rays move parallel to the joint spaces, giving the radiologist the ability to see through the open intervertebral spaces. Turn the spine to a PA projection and note how the lordotic curve no longer works to our advantage. While the central ray aligns with the L2, L3 intervertebral space, None of the other rays find alignment. Those joint spaces would be obscured. Bottom line here is that the central ray placement is important and at times the recommended projection is also equally as important. As object to image distance increases, the size of the image is made larger or is magnified. Along with magnification, there is a loss in image detail. Again, during radiologic examinations, it is important to keep the object of interest as close to the image receptor as possible. This explains why chest x-rays are best done using a PA projection. It minimizes magnification of the heart shadow, yielding a more accurate evaluation of heart size. In this image, one can clearly see that the ball with the longer object to image distance is outlined with more divergent rays. These rays have greater opportunity to spread before they reach the image receptor, yielding a magnified image. Source to image distance can also affect magnification. A long source to image distance will cause less magnification 
then will a short source to image distance. C is the anode inside the x-ray tube moves closer to the image receptor, the sphere is magnified more. Source to image distance also affects magnification, but with the opposite change in magnitude. As SID becomes smaller, the magnification of the object becomes less. As OID becomes smaller, the magnification of the object becomes greater. There is some distortion on all radiographic images. Distortion can be beneficial and aid in the diagnosis if used in a planned and carefully controlled manner. Distortion can be broken down into two major categories. Distortion of the object shape, normally caused by tilting the tube, image receptor, or patient, and size or magnification, where the object appears larger than it is. For distortion to occur, something must physically move in space, specifically the image receptor or the patient. If the object to image distance, the source to image distance, or the source to object distance change, the size of the image will change. The image will increase or decrease in size. Remember that all radiographic images to some degree are magnified. The other of distortion is angulation. Specifically, shape distortion occurs with angulation. Angling the tube is the most common form of beneficial distortion. Generally, angulation is used to open up joint spaces or, or to display anatomy free of superimposition. The closer the image receptor is to the anatomy, the less the image will distort and move relative to the image receptor. Angling the image receptor in today's radiologic environment is unusual. Normally, angling the image receptor is done while also angling the tube as well, canceling the distortional effects of the tube angle. Angling the patient is the second most used form of beneficial distortion and is used to open joint spaces and display anatomy free of superimposition. As the x-ray beam exits the tube, it diverges or spreads out more as you move away from the central ray. The divergence is, has the most effect on large images. In the case of an AP lumbar spine, the lordotic curve of the spine can the divergence of the x-rays to open up the intervertebral joint spaces, where the joint spaces would be obscured on the PA projection of a lumbar spine. Thank you for your attention.